I'm Steve Weller. I was the chair of the task force that prepared a cast issue paper 55, The Contributions of Pesticides to Pest Management and Meeting the Global Need for Food Production by 2050. Today I will present a summary of the findings and information provided in this paper. I'd like to first start by thanking the task force members involved in the preparation of this paper. I was the chair. I'm Steve Weller from Purdue University. I was assisted by the authors Albert Cuthbert, a plant pathologist from the University of Georgia, Leonard Giannisi, who wrote the weed science section, who is in, from the Crop Protection Research Institute, and Larry Godfrey, an entomologist from the University of California, Davis, who led the section on insecticides and entomology. I'd like to thank the reviewers of the paper, John Jaquetta from Dow AgroSciences, Jason Norsworthy from the University of Arkansas, John Palumbo from the University of Arizona, and Cass Liaison, John Madsen from the USDA. And I'd also like to thank Carol Gastall, who was the main editor on this paper, and Linda Schimenti, who was a cast representative who helped in the final preparation of the paper and also organization of the rollout that was held in Washington, D.C. on November 17, 2014. The paper provides information on the use of pesticides, especially synthetic pesticides that have been used since World War II. It describes why pesticides became popular and are widely used basically because they are effective and they increase yields. We also cover a tremendous amount of information on proper use of approved pesticides and when properly used, how they can have a major impact on food production in the developed and the developing world. We feel strongly that the intelligent use of pesticides has led to more efficient, sustainable, and productive crop management and will play a major role in the future in high crop yields that are necessary to feed the world population by 2050. Some of the challenges that face agriculture, the primary challenge is the population increase and the need for more food. By 2050, it is estimated that there will be 9 billion people in the world. That's an increase of 2 billion from present levels by 2050. Major issues of poverty, hunger, malnutrition, and the presence of communicable and non-communicable diseases are major issues, especially in the developing world, and will play a major role if we do not address them in whether or not we are able to produce the food necessary by 2050. Other factors that have always been involved in agriculture but are going to be of increasing importance are variations in climate that affect crop growth and yields, the availability of water, Presently, 70% of all fresh water used in the world is used in agriculture. As population increases, there will be increasing demands on this water from non-agricultural sectors. We also have to be aware of how our agriculture affects the environment. We do not want to degrade the environment. We do not want to lose the diversity of plant and animal species because increases in agricultural land. But in this particular paper, we are especially concentrating on the importance of pest management in achieving higher yields. And we always keep in mind how agrobiodiversity has always been and will continue to be critical to human survival and, and the ability to produce the agricultural yields we need to feed the world. This slide shows the projected population growth in the world from now until 2050. It's estimated that there will be an increase of 38% in the total population of the world from, nine, from 7 billion at current levels to upwards of 9 billion by 2050. Major increases in population will increase in low-income countries or the developing world, especially in South Central Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and North Africa and West Asia. These are the areas where food production must increase and food availability, food security, must be insured. So the major problems in the developing world are poverty, hunger, and food insecurity. We must increase food production by 70% by 2050 to feed the increase in the population and to make sure that these people have a balanced and diversified diet 
that leads to better health. More than 800 million people in the world are food insecure at the present time, and if we do not address these issues, that number could reach 1 billion by 2050. Currently, there are 130 million malnourished nourished children in the world, with the majority of these in the developing world, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. It's also, we have to address issues of diet for child, women of childbearing age and pregnant women so that the babies that are born are healthy. Presently, the daily intake of food in the developed world is about 3,500 kilocalories, and a normal adult needs a minimum of 2,900 kilocalories today to be a productive contributor to society. In the developing world, the poor and undernourished generally consume less than 2,000 kilocalories today. Many of these are farmers, and this leads to a lower productivity and less ability to produce the food that's necessary to feed the world. When we look at pesticides and the be benefits to agriculture, lower crop yields throughout the world have been shown in many studies to be due in a large part to uncontrolled pests during the cropping cy cycle and also during storage. It has been shown in research in the developing world and well founded in the developed world from past research that pesticides have great potential to increase yields and have a favorable cost-benefit ratio. And pesticide use in the developing world will help promote other sustainable practices that will result in a better, more sustainable, and productive ecosystem, increased food production, especially where right now yields are low in the developed, developing world. The major pesticide groups addressed in this paper are insecticides, fungicides, and herbicides. We realize there are other pesticides, including rodenticides, molluscicides, and nematicides, chemicals that affect plant growth and regulate their growth, and other materials that protect plants or modify their physiology to the benefit of yield. We also realize that pesticide use goes beyond agriculture, although we concentrate on that in this paper, but other areas of, of importance are control of undesirable pests in households and the landscape. Key concepts in this paper are the pesticide use yields benefits in both the developed and developing world from the standpoint of yield and higher quality of crop. This is important both for pathogen control, weed control, and arthropod control or insects and the use of fungicides, herbicides, and insecticides. The use of pesticides also contributes to improved agronomic and other agricultural practices, including no-till, conservation tillage, which helps conserve and maintain high-quality soils, uh, ability to plant crops at much higher densities, resulting in increased yields, and more efficient use of inputs such as water and nutrients. However, pesticides must be applied in smart, safe ways in order to remain sustainable and result in the yield increases we need. The overall message, all of us as authors are optimistic about developments occurring around the globe that will minimize crop losses due to pests and how pesticides have in the past and will in the future play a major role in this increased yields. When pesticides are effectively applied, and fully integrated into a comprehensive food production system, they will help the world produce the food necessary by 2050. And integrated crop management or integrated pest management approaches are important in any kind of pest management system because they recognize that not all weeds, insects, and pathogens are necessarily bad and have to be eliminated in, from the system. Good pest management integrates the best agronomic practices and the best crop germplasm in order to obtain high quality crop yields. The value of pesticide use, specifically in the U.S., has been shown that data from agronomic field crops, vegetable, fruit, and nut crops, that an additional $51 billion in value is derived from the use of pesticides to manage pests within the crop system. For field crops, 36% of the total value of production was attributed to the use of crop protection chemicals. And 
the use of pesticides resulted in not only improved crop yields and quality, but better shelf life, lim limitation of pest population expansion from currently existing sites, and increased incomes for the farmers, and also a multiplier effect along the entire value chain from the time the seed is planted in the field until it's sold to the consumer. Pests do reduce crop yields. It has been shown that 30% of yield and up to 20 to 50% of stored harvested crops are lost on a world basis to pests every year. It pre-estimates that with, if pesticides were incorporated into the production systems throughout the world of wheat, maize, and rice, yields could increase from 7 to over 10% on a world basis. Specific examples in weed, insect, and disease management are given in this paper. From examples of how farmers manage these pests prior to the onset of the synthetic pesticide age, and how synthetic herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides became more popular after World War II. In addition to this, insect management was important in emphasizing how integrated pest management where you study the system, you study the pest complexes within that system so that you know when you have to make appropriate interventions in maintaining high quality yield and in reducing pest influence on the crop growth are important. And this has now been expanded into weed management and disease management systems. Examples of countries that have high use of pesticides, specifically in wheat, rice, and maize, are the developed world, including the United States, Canada, Western Europe, Brazil, Argentina, China, Japan, and Australia. When you look at the percentage of total world production of wheat, rice, and maize from these countries, they produce well over 60 to 75 percent of these three crops on a world basis. This shows that pesticide use and high technologies play a major role in increased crop production compared with the developing world where high technology is not quite as prevalent. When you compare yields in Sub-Saharan Africa for maize, rice, sorghum, and groundnuts compared with those yields on a global basis, you see that for many crops, only about 25% of maximum global yields can be obtained due to lower levels of technologies, germplasm, and use of pesticides for these crops. So there's a, a big opportunity for improved yields in the developing world by the use of pesticides. When we talk specifically about fungicides and their impact on crop yields, the average yield increase in 50 crops was measured and shown that increases of 16 to 100 percent could be obtained when fungicides were incorporated into the system. Increased use of fungicides resulted in increased farm yield of over 13 billion dollars per year in the U.S. In Brazil, Asian soybean rust was reduced in Brazil by 59 percent by the use of fungicides with a subsequent increase in yield of 44 percent. Prevention of mycotoxin contamination of wheat and other crops is very well managed by the use of fungicides. Mycotoxins are a very deadly uh, pathogen that can affect health when crops infested with mycotoxin are ingested by human beings. Other examples are rice blast epidemics in South Korea which essentially eliminated rice production and when fungicides were incorporated into the system, rice blasts was controlled, the epidemics were stopped, and South Korea now produces more rice than they did prior to this epidemic. Other examples are scab in apples throughout the world, but in Europe, when fungicides are used, scab incidence was reduced by 80%. If you look at fungicide contributions to yield increase in the U.S., many horticultural crops and many agronomic crops are treated with fungicides. And you can see in the, the example shown here, 75 to 95% of the acreage of these crops are treated with fungicides. When you look at the reduction in yield if fungicides were not used in many of these crops, you can see that 
yields could be reduced by 19% in tomatoes to upwards of 65% in peanuts, 61% in, in watermelons if fungicides were taken out of the system. Fungicide sprays have shown that they have reduced the incidence of wheat rust in sprayed fields to less than 2% and in unsprayed fields the incidence was 80% or higher. Hops, a very popular crop with the growing microbrewery industry in the United States specifically, is important from the standpoint of fungicide use. Pottery mildew is pretty much common in all hop production areas. 100% of the U.S. hops are treated with fungicides. Without the treatment and the presence of powdery mildew, hops are unsuitable for brewing and the industry would suffer dramatically. When you look at maize production in Africa, with the use of fungicides versus no use of fungicides, fungicide use can increase maize yields from between 27 to 54 percent as shown in this particular slide. Insecticides and insect infestation is pretty common in all major crops in the U.S. and throughout the world. And chemical insecticides have been shown to be not only effective but cost effective in pre preventing large crop losses from insect infestation. 30 to 100 percent of U.S. agricultural acres are treated with insecticides annually and these are common crops that receive insecticides. Insect control, when, you, when used on crops and quantified, showed that when 50 crops were surveyed, 42 of these 50 crops had more than 50 percent of their acreage annually treated with insecticides. We've shown that insecticides were effective in preventing crop loss from insects, and if no treatment, on 38 of the 50 surveyed crops, yields vary, yield losses varied from between 40 to 70 percent. Insecticides helped U.S. farmers produce additional food and also additional income. And every dollar spent on insecticides results in $19 of production value. If you survey farmers, they use insecticides to manage pest populations because insecticides reduce the risk of crop loss and help them in their investments and in their income generating stream. This is an example of nectarine production in California from 1936 to 2001. Show that prior to the introduction of insecticides in the 50s, yields were pretty static. But with the increased use of insecticides from 1950s through 2001, yields increased dramatically from less than 50 million pounds to over 550 million pounds because the crop was insect free and the crop that was harvested was blemish free and very attractive to consumers. When we talk about herbicides and their benefits, they're best understood by comparing the practicality the cost, the effectiveness, and the reliability of herbicides compared to hand weeding. Many experiments have been done that show if enough hand weeding or cultivation is done at the proper time in a crop, yields can be equivalent to using herbicides. The problem is that there's a shortage of workers for farm work throughout the world and it makes hand weeding not only impractical from a standpoint of number of people available, but also from a cost factor hand weeding is very expensive. The reliability of cultivation can also be compromised by weather. If you can't get into the field because of heavy rains, the, the weeds continue to grow and by the time you can get in and remove the weeds by mechanical or by hand weeding, yield loss has occurred. In contrast, herbicides applied at the beginning of the cropping season or post-emergence to weeds offer a reliable and consistent option compared to mechanical or hand removal where they are available and affordable. Is there a solution by use of hand weeding? It is a perfect non-chemical alternative to herbicides but in reality as mentioned impractical on a large scale 
due to the fact of a shortage of labor. There's shown in the U.S. there would be a requirement for 70 million workers for hand weeding to prevent yield loss if we did not have the availability of herbicides. There just are not 70 million people that want to hand weed crops in the U.S. And it's also becoming a major problem throughout the world, even in the developing world. Data from the 1960s forward indicate that the use of herbicides have played a major role in increasing yields on major U.S. crops. Similar results have been obtained throughout the developed world and in experiments in the developing world. Improved weed control has resulted in less weed competition, fewer cultivations, soil conservation, and a maintenance of a high quality soil that remains very productive. And in many developing areas of the world, it has been shown that increases in soybean and maize production was a result of the adoption of herbicides for weed control. In the U.S., this, this slide shows that the majority of crops receive herbicides on an annual basis. Most crops, over 90% of the acreage is treated with herbicides. Why? Because they're effective. If herbicides were not used, there would be less yield or less production. This could result in higher food prices. It would require alternative approaches to weed management, basically more cultivation, more hand weeding, expensive and also environmentally degrading. If we had lower yields, this would result in fewer farm exports from the U.S. to other parts of the world and would require increased food imports into the U.S. to feed our population. This is an example from 1865 until 2005 and show how various improvements in crops and inputs into the production of crops affected yield. From 1865 until about 1930, crop yields were pretty static at about 30 bushels per acre. Hybrids introduced in the 30s, followed by fertilizer and the introduction of herbicides in this case, increased yields dramatically from about 30 bushels per acre to today over 150 bushels per acre, primarily because of herbicides and good weed control. His hand, hand weeding is the predominant weed control practice in Sub-Saharan Africa and much of the developing world. In Africa specifically, 50 to 70 percent of the labor in crop production is spent hand weeding. And much of this hand weeding is done by women and children of school age, taking away the education opportunities for children and also the drudgery of the work women. In this case you see a woman with a child on her back. Hours of hand weeding required for optimum yields in Africa for groundnuts, cassava, and maize and sorghum are shown in this slide and vary from 150 hours per hectare for sorghum up to over 370 hours per hectare for groundnuts. Tremendous amount of labor input for weed removal and does not allow these people to be involved in other productive aspects of developing their country's economies. When you compare sorghum yields and various methods of weed control in Nigeria, you see that pre-emergence herbicides increased yields upwards of 5,000 kilograms per hectare compared with hand hoeing for three times which resulted in about 3,500 kilograms per hectare compared with essentially no yield in fields that were weedy and never practice any type of weed control. Another example that herbicides offer great potential for increases in yields and effective weed control. Presently, just over 3% of African smallholder farmers are using herbicides in their maize fields. 97% are relying on hand weeding primarily for weed removal. It's been stated that farmers in Africa will not be able to obtain their optimum yields from their crops, optimum land use, or optimum input of other investment in crop production if they do not improve their traditional methods of weed control. So in this paper we showed 
how pesticides have resulted in increased yields and more effective production of crops. We've shown that there are many examples to support pesticide use for effectively and economically managing pests. And in order to achieve the yields of crop necessary to meet the population of food requirements by 2050, this will best be achieved by using comprehensive integrated approaches that incorporate the best management tools, the best technology, in order to produce the food necessary to feed 9 billion people by 2050. Pesticides have played a major role in achieving yields in the past, and they will play a major role in achieving these yield goals by 2050. We also realize that it's important to develop and label only safe pesticides that are as risk-free as possible. When pesticides are released for common use, it's important that they're labeled properly, that people are trained properly in their use, both in mixing, application, and storage, so that they reduce any undue exposure and decrease any negative effects that might be present by the use of pesticides in the environment. We also realize that regulation is important so that pesticides are evaluated on a routine basis, both those that are presently on the market and those that are being introduced in the market, and that this is based not only on their effectiveness, but benefits of their use that far outweigh any risk of their use. We also know that it's important in the future to emphasize pest management solutions that use multiple tools, integrated crop management approaches, and do not rely solely on pesticide use to manage your pests. There are many techniques and in integrated pest management approaches that farmers should adopt and should be trained on. We also emphasize employing practices that avoid the development of resistance to existing pesticides and never rely on only one pesticide tool to control any insect, disease, or weed, but offer a toolbox of management approaches that reduce selection pressure for the development of resistance. Also, I'd like to mention Science Magazine in 2013 had an issue that discussed smarter pest control, not only from various management techniques, but also new technologies that are being developed for the discovery of new chemistries, both synthetic, natural products, and biological, that in the future will ensure not only effective um, pest management, but safer pesticides for the future and allow us to attain the yields necessary to feed the 9 billion people that will be present on the earth by 2050. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you for listening to me and to make you aware of the CAST website where you can obtain issue paper number 55 if you want to read more about what was in this paper. I'd also like to end by thanking the members of my writing team and also the reviewers and the cast representatives who made sure that this paper was well written and presented in an understandable way. Thank you very much.